Okay, so I'm recording this. We'll just get started and let people get on this as as people join. What's where's my camera? Here's my camera. Uh, where's my camera here? Welcome. All right. So I'll I'll do a brief intro to the sessions. Did 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 you guys see the video on the design sprints page as far as the introduction to what's going on today and does it make sense uh, you get some feedback on that first I didn't see the video but I, I read the page a bit and so mm -hmm. more or less made sense except that can you only suggest subject matter experts through the uh, discuss uh, portion on that on that page or mm-hmm Okay, let me go go through that. So I'm gonna share my screen then, and you can follow this. So Google Hangout screen shared, so you guys can see that. So on the design sprint page, um, the idea is to compress lots of development time into a short time period where you see clear visible results because many people are participating, and we do that with the actual builds where we have say 50 people swarming on a house build such that we can build a whole house and in five days or a big machine like the brick press in a single day so that's the same theory doing that virtually or in real life as a as a real way to do things uh, to produce significant results that are valuable to the economy so I'm gonna click on um, August 27 design sprints from the the design sprints page uh, on the wiki open source ecology org slash wiki design sprints uh, so the little video introduces the concept which is basically what I'm what I'm trying to tell you right now the the link is the the place where we're working is uh, one one way to go up to this is go into the SME search design sprint document because it has all the working links in there we can use both this document which uh, I'm getting into so if you click on that link on top of that document you can get into there so maybe if you guys can do that as well uh, the working link is the SMEs page, which is also on the wiki, which has the discuss. The idea about the discuss is that many people can do that independently, and you can see real-time results as people put in their answers and things, which kind of creates the energy for people to, to work with. But between the discuss, so I'm going to go to that page. Uh, so I'm going to the discuss page. The SMEs page basically lists, it's a partial list, I mean it's not complete, but um, it, it shows some of the relevant current working areas where we are. And the discuss is a good way to do it because people can comment and the important part about it is the little upvote signal symbols there, the upvote mm -hmm. and downvote where you actually, if there's enough eyeballs looking at this, it should crowd select the best answers and the key being do we have enough people looking at it um, but the questions are there and people can upvote and downvote them so that the best answers go to the top I also have the ability to erase answers if they're like totally irrelevant or messed up and also to feature like there's a featured comment um, and people can put in pictures I believe as well into this so that's one way to input and then the document the working document the Google presentation we can also put notes there so if you wanna put in for example on the first page sign in um, please sign your name and it's an openly editable doc that's the concept of this cloud collaboration we're using documents that are completely open to the public so you can right now edit that and uh, put your name hey okay Nick Rom okay cool um, you can edit real time with a lot of different people so that's th that's basically the idea for today the idea is that um, if we go back to let me go back to the design sprints page The concept is the the what we're doing right now is preparing for the big builds that are coming up both in September and November. September is the one day build of the brick press, where we're pretty much taking that machine to a hundred percent. There's still, I mean, every time we build it, there's improvements, and including this time, including 
significant improvements on the controller, on the actual components for the hydraulic solenoids. It turns out the ones we were using before have a significant drawback that doesn't work for us. And some other simplifications. So it, it always gets better and, and we're trying to involve everybody with that. So that's the bricks, brick pressing for the the greenhouse and aquapon aquapon and greenhouse and seed home builds. And just to show you that, the we just had the great success on the Kickstarter. Um, we've got OBI here. Here we have the on the OBI OpenBuildingInstitute.org. We've got the workshops coming up, and that's what we're preparing for. If you look at uh, so there's the upcoming workshops uh, page at OpenBuildingInstitute.org. You can see the the Aquapana greenhouse and seed home coming up in November. But the idea there is, if you look at how it works, there's an infographic of the house, and we're really, really pushing the limits of the ecological features. So the house that we're going to build this November, that's an infographic for it, but it's essentially aiming towards Living Building Challenge certification. And we also have Bob Berkebeel, who is a well-known architect who created that challenge. He's one of our advisors. We just met with him on, on Wednesday. But we're, we're jamming it into a, into a 750-square-foot structure that's got some compressed earth block in it. It's got an earth block floor. It's got a couple of walls that are CEB. But it's got a biodigester, rainwater catchment. It's off-grid on energy with PV and a thermoelectric generator. It's got a pellet burning stove, a super efficient fridge that uses 8 watts on average, which is essentially a freezer converted to a fridge that's top opening. And that's a really easy way to get super efficiency on a fridge. Super efficient lighting, super efficient shower head, modular plumbing units, meaning that um, if you look at the toilet or the sink or the shower, they're all on pedestals where all the plumbing is connected to the pedestal. So you basically can, along our lines of parallel design and build, you can build them completely independently from one another and thus allow yourself this five-day complete build. And we don't mean just a shell. We mean the complete structure, including plumbing, electrical, and, and interior. So um, this is what we aim to achieve this November 4. And this is just essentially showing a 256-square-foot kind of a unit. We're building three of those, essentially. It's essentially a 750-square-foot structure and part of this and it's one of the design sprint questions here part of that is uh, if you go to the SME's page the structural engineering because this panelized construction system that we use which is essentially frame panels uh, for a lot of things like roof sections the wall sections you can have like a 4 by 8 CB wall section or primarily panels that are 4 by 8 that are either walls windows or doors but that kind of construction is not covered by the inter International Residential Code. You can't really get prescriptive <clears throat> formulas like, okay, here's what we're doing, that's in the code, we're okay with the building department. What we have to do is, is actually get everything pretty much engineered, a lot of the things, because they just don't, it's non-standard construction. So, so part of it, one of the questions today, and it's a big one for us, because we want to get all this documentation by November 4, it's essentially taking all of our um, all of our structure and design and get it getting it approved by engineers so that someone can do that for us I mean you'd still need a stamp from your local building department but if you have all the calculations and all that work done for you it's gonna save you tremendous amounts of effort and money to get that process where you know maybe it's like five thousand bucks to get engineering uh, complete engineering done let's say but you know say you've done everything and the engineer just reviews it and it's very clear ex ex extremely transparent it might cost you like 500 bucks or possibly be free if your building department is pretty lax and they they can understand your documents but that question there is uh, um, what are the I'm trying to find this question in the list here so if you look at the discuss there's the the topics we're covering today are mass production of compressed earth blocks uh, we think we have a good person on that um, water purification from catchment to potable groundwater or catchment to potable 
uh, thermoelectric generator, 100 watt open source version. Jim Halleck is the compressed earth block person. I'm talking to him today. Uh, cons CB construction detailed drawings for foundations and everything else, including seismic zones, rainwater catchment, pellet burners, biogas digesters, rainwater gardens uh, for, for handling effluent, hydronic stoves, production <laughs> aquaponic greenhouse, I'll look at that, there's some good inputs there. Uh, production growing of sprouts, which is for the aquaponic greenhouse. And who are the structural engineers? Okay, that's the last one. That should be pretty much. I'm going to try to uh, feature that. The last question there is who are some leading structural engineers that we can work with? So I'm going to stop featuring that one, the one that was on top, and I'm going to post um, the last one on top. Uh, it's, I'm not sure how it's letting me do that. Moderate. Okay, it's not letting me do that for some reason right now. Uh, so that's the idea. So that's the design sprint for today. We basically want to get everybody going on these questions. And what are some of the other communication channels here? Actually, I'm gonna go. I'm going to the design sprint working document and. It's also people who, who watch this on, on YouTube after because we're recording this right now. Uh, also, there's an OSC IRC page, uh, Internet Relay Chat for people who can't. There's only 10 people that can get on a Google Hangout before we... We're looking at installing Mumble, which is an open source teleconferencing thing that can get you more than 10 people. But also OSC IRC, Internet Relay Chat, if you can't make the, the Google Hangout someone could put paste in a link to that it's on a wiki uh, and the other thing is we can also try I mean the the thing is how do we explore and, and create you know just using this remote collaboration process what are some other things uh, I mean we use Facebook a lot to post things and Facebook has Facebook live so for example I can go to Facebook right now and go to um, and I'm gonna try that right now just to see if it's practical but but anyone can go on Facebook Live where instead of making a, a report, you, you choose essentially, uh, it allows you to do, if you go to a new post on a, on a cell phone, it says go live. Um, so I'm actually doing that and I'm going to say design sprint because there's a lot of people that are on Facebook right now. So I'm actually doing that. I've got my cell phone in front of me, and I'm getting... Okay, I don't know if it's going to work here. But, uh, so introducing this, hello people, join the... So I'm just saying to Facebook here, join us on a design sprint, opensourceecology.org slash wiki, design sprint. We're doing that right now, and you can join us on a Google Hangout. So I, I just said that on, on a on uh, Facebook Live, I'm just gonna finish that. But but basically, like, what are all the creative ways to to involve people in a remote process? Uh, so I'm just posting that, and that should come up on the OSC Facebook page just right now. So we kind of like, if there's a lot of people on Facebook that are our followers, they can also get uh, get knowledge of this. Okay, so that's that's this week's um, this week's program. I'm just gonna introduce what's happening next week because we're gonna continue with these design sprints as we prepare for the builds. But next week we're gonna do the brick press, which is um, let me just show you that because we've got essentially complete 3D CAD that's available for this in step files. So if you go to C B press, the step file is completely available. However, um, that's been generated in s some proprietary formats like well, whatever whatever that is. But we're using FreeCAD as the open source 3D CAD. So the next next task on the brick press is to convert the full 3d cad file which is if you go to the versions there's the genealogy and cb press 6 but the complete current downloads exist there and and there's like 500 pages of instructionals right now that we're going to pretty much clean up and put them use using it's called what is it um the open source desktop publishing software we're going to publish that 
into a very nice manual that's that's anyone can use and all the 3d CAD fabrication drawings exploded part diagrams are there all using FreeCAD. Now FreeCAD has that capacity right now. So next week what we're going to do is uh, take the the FreeCAD, well actually there's two dimensional uh, CNC cutting files for the brick press. We're going to take those and rebuild the entire machine from scratch from the 2D DXF files. So that means you take one piece, you extrude it within FreeCAD. So start with DXF, go into FreeCAD, extrude it, make a three-dimensional object from it, and then you combine it to make the different parts of the machine. Now, if the machine has about 100 parts or 200 parts, it's about, the part count is like, I think overall is like 350 or so, but there's like, you know, say about you know 200 mechanical pieces. Take 200 people doing that, you can in principle generate an entire 3D CAD file like within an hour if there's you know you got 200 people working on it and that's the whole point of the open source typically the the bottleneck on CAD was that one person does that and uh, it takes a long time it takes months for them to generate a detailed 3d CAD file if you you know especially if you want all the fabrication drawings etc uh, all the full documentation so uh, we're gonna try to break that up and next week uh, go with a simple free CAD instructional for how you go from a flat DXF file into a 3d cat file because the entire brick press right now is cut out from you can do it i mean you can use stock steel sections but right now we redesigned it so that you can cut it out from flat steel and we're gonna use our cnc torch table for next time in september 23rd to do that we're gonna have that operational um so people can play with that during the workshop itself and it's gonna be a one-day build but that's the that's the theme for next week so right now let's uh, dive into the program here just researching like for me some of the top things I'm gonna look into some of the structural engineers I'm gonna look at the uh, biogas digester that's a big one for home scale term pred zone bio digesters I mean that doesn't really exist no I don't know of anybody who's doing that I mean there's Thomas Coolhain which um, which I would tend to put in there uh, as one of the top choices so let's do it if anyone has any questions please uh, please ask otherwise um, here let me uh, stop sharing my screen so otherwise uh, we can start doing this collaborative research and see see what we can come up with so go to the page um, SMEs page which is on the wiki I can paste that into the chat box in the, in the Google Hangout so if you can use the Google Hangout um, to look on what's going on, you can you can go to the SMEs page on the wiki to see what's actually happening. So if you have any questions, let me know. I can uh, I can try to answer that best I can. But otherwise, we can uh, get going. So any questions or anything like that? Otherwise, we just uh, go to the design sprint, uh, the SMEs page, and keep going at it. Now. The last thing about that is, okay, so we can list things, but then it takes a lot of time to contact people and find out, like, just because a person is the best person in the world on that doesn't mean they, they're any, they're much or significant value to our program if they're not willing to share. So the, the key concept is we need to contact these people and say, hey, guy, uh, you're an SME on, on biodigesters. Can you actually help us as far as do a webinar, generate some design, or create some other significant contribution that gets us to the actual technical build so that's the deal like just it could be some person in the middle of nowhere like me or whoever um, could be some obscure person that's actually really willing to share and document their stuff and they could be the most useful it doesn't have to be that expert who's got the name or whatever so so that's a that's an approach we we take they have to be collaboratively literate you have to they have to be willing to share openly what they're doing for them to be really useful so so that's where we we have the template on the SMEs page there's a sample letter there if you um, let me share my screen again there's a sample letter on the SMEs page which is it's on the action section so you got the open source ecology.org slash wiki slash SMEs this page here you've got a sample template letter uh, which under action here dear person I'm working with open source ecology blah 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 we're looking for subject subject matter experts can you contribute your expertise we're open source love us contribute thanks and then sign your name um, 
so yeah feel free to use that representing osc as far as uh what we do here is generate assets for the common good and that's that's how we motivate others to contribute and that, that's how that works so you can feel free to use that letter um, so the most valuable responses like in a disgusting upvoting is okay if we actually talk to somebody and they're and they're willing to share that's really powerful and important for the program so if I don't know if it the the discuss refreshes automatically but uh, if you hit refresh on the screen I'm not sure if discuss does that uh, we'll find out so this is largely testing the methods you know does this work is this a manageable process so we're just exploring just just uh, doing exploration exploratory uh, collaborative design using these platforms okay so I'm gonna be quiet now get to work on that if there's any questions please let me know so and please sign into the SME search design sprint that's uh, I'm gonna paste that in so that's pasted in there's a question Donald Earth, Earthship Biotecture contacted we haven't contacted Earthship Biotecture but okay let's see there's a there's a great article on that topic because people are freaking out over Earthships uh, there's definitely a lot of positives a lot of critiques as well for us it doesn't really work as far as their building system they we might use some of their um, let's see what it says under Earthships Earthship yeah there's an article on our wiki about Earthships um, Actually, on the, I believe it's on the SM, OBI, there's another page called OBI SMEs, and I put a link to this, this is when we were looking for, there's another page called OBI SMEs where it's also a capture form, it's just a Google form where you're also able to input experts. Um, there's this other page. On the OBI SME page, there's a comment on the... Um, Earthship. Yeah, here it is. Um, this link right here. It's a very good article about Earthships. If you want to learn everything about the Earthship, why it's good and why it's bad, uh, read this article here. So that's worth, you know, that's actually worth putting into the Um. Yeah, the the reason I mention Earthship Biotexture is they're the best example that I have found about water purification and how to handle gray water. Mm -hmm. That's that's their, a good point. Their actual design of the building is probably more applicable to. Um, climate conditions that are like the, the southwest United States mm -hmm. like yeah. dry desert type stuff yeah but that's I, good. I think I saw the beginning of a video on YouTube that a gentleman in Canada had has an earthship and I I do not know if there's desert type areas yeah. in Canada like there is in the in the southwest yeah no people build it everywhere I've seen ones in in Canada but the question is do they have a technical design for potable water so that would be the relevant technical questions okay we got you know you can have a lot of good concepts is there actually do they actually share that I mean one of one of the things about earthships is they're not particularly open source like a lot of their designs are actually if you go on their site they're their proprietary designs they don't even post them fully uh, so I don't know if we can find it elsewhere so, but officially it appears that from their official program they're not particularly open source about their work um, but that's a good good question so I'm gonna search for I had some comments about who some of the biodigester people are some person last name Fry or the journey to forever um, let me see 
So where is the... Biodigester. Structural calculations. So this one. There's Thomas Colhane I know about. Um, so the good thing is to put in links to whatever you do. It's from Solar Cities. Um, he's definitely a loud voice for biodigesters right now. Um, question is, does it work? Can we track down some good examples of that working? Um, so there's that with the link. The Journey to Forever people, let's see that. Biogas digester. L. John Fry. Okay, L. John Fry. He's supposed to be a good guy on biodigesters. Methane digester, so fuel gas and fertilizer. L. John Fry. So the idea is, this, this I, I recall is an older gentleman, and uh, let's see if we can track him down. So let's look at L. John Fry. Idea being, we can, you know, we can go a lot through researching it ourselves. It's better to do a quick download from a, from a guy who's about to retire. John Fry. Okay, so 1973 L. John Fry, so this guy must be a little old. But let's see, do we find a idea? Is do we find a contact for this guy? Like, how do we contact him? Well, this is on Journey to Forever. So, save that one. And the Journey to Forever have prototyped the jesters. So, let's see if we can find a contact for the Journey to Forever. Okay, Keith Addison. Good. So I got Keith at Journey to Forever.org. So I'm gonna contact them. Once again he looks like an older guy. Um Okay, let's see that.
so first um, I'm gonna save that so we got the contact there I'm gonna go to my email gonna go to the template letter page here action so I'm gonna copy and paste the letter dear Keith Working with uh, I'm the founder of Open Source Ecology. See the TED talk. We're kind of designing open source blueprints for. So, um, so this house includes a biodigester. And helping, so I'm going to say, can you contribute your expertise on helping us design an open source biodigester that is that is low maintenance and can produce gas for cooking that our goal is gas for cooking that's a byproduct and the second part is the effluent that comes out of that eventually goes into the rainwater garden that rainwater garden can be used to grow vegetables or other plants um, so cooking gas that's that's our cooking gas solution for the current version we're gonna do that and we're also gonna have a dual system of propane plus the the biogas so for example for canning you know if you have an intense session of say you got to do a hundred cans of applesauce well probably the biogas digester is not going to do that like real quick right there it's more the continuous thing so we would have a backup so a dual system is basically a T T in a backup source cooking gas we can produce cooking gas we're looking for technical advice with so show the team of advisors so this will be used in a CD co home thanks marching Okay, so I'm sending Keith from sending us Keith at Journey to Forever. So I'm gonna hit send. And if some people wanna mute in the background there, let's see, there's some noise. Yeah. Um, there's a uh, Solar Cities. I don't know if you've seen that. Right. That's Thomas Colhane. It's in. It's the link. I put it in there already. Under biogas digester. Thomas Colhane, solarcities.blogspot.com. Okay, so we gotta contact this guy. Um, 
Uh, I just shared a bunch of links on the rainwater digester. I guess I put it in the wrong section. Where? Oh, yeah, it's in the um, in the discuss. Yeah, might have to refresh. You put it under the rainwater thing. Yeah, I think I put it on the wrong one. I'm not seeing it updated on there on your screen. There it is. Okay, so the the one outcome here is we have to hit refresh in order to. If you're looking at the discuss page, you need to hit refresh for it to update. Okay, so Jonathan, yeah, I see your stuff here. That's good. Do we can we find an address email for him and email him? Can you do that? Can you try to find yep. that? Yep. That's great. I tried emailing him before. He was he's like somewhere in the Middle East right now, I think, doing his work and writing a book. Well, let's see if we can track him down. I mean, whether on Facebook or somewhere. I haven't had a response from him yet. So it'd be good to ping him from different places. Um I've heard feedback that um this definitely doesn't have a proven track record yet but of course that's what we do we we're always experimenting as far as his his specific work um, okay so i'm seeing people posting stuff in a in a group chat so i'm going to say to you don't be shy go into the discuss and hit a response if you can at the discuss, let me put that link in there again. I'm putting in the chat. Record that in um, in a discuss simply because when we shut down the chat, all this gets lost. When we shut down the Google Hangout, that's not doc that's not recorded. It disappears. So if you put it on a wiki, it stays. Now the other thing is OSE IRC. That's on the wiki. OSC IRC. Let's see if anyone's hanging out there, because we did put that as a link. Um, so OSC internet inter, internet <clears throat> relay chat. Hacking the earth, shit. So on the IRC, connect to the IRC. You can go connect through that right on the wiki. If you go to the wiki slash IRC, so you could do as I'm doing right now. Let's see if anyone's hanging out there. So connect. Yeah, if you go to the OSCIRC, there's a whole bunch of people hanging out there, so is there any discussion there? Um, so 
so I should have that open. Another note for anyone listening is that when we do the brick press build, what we have seen before, we that's one of our accomplishments, is we were able to do real-time documentation where we have a Google Hangout running and we're uploading pictures and talking to people remotely such that by the end of the build we have a complete manual published. We're going to do that this time with a brick press so that we can update the manual in real time. So FYI that's on September 23 so we can host uh, you can say it's a it's a documentation sprint at that time and we'll have templates for the uh, for the documentation. Let's see, so the IRC doesn't look like there's too much action there. Get some of the comments here. Okay, so Michael, for example, did you pump it into the? Into the discuss. Yeah, I put in the discussion. Excellent. Let me see if I can see that here. Was that system producing cooking gas? Yeah, it was under um, biogas uh, digester. You've seen that producing cooking gas? Yeah, they had a little stove attached to it and they were cooking off of it. It's nice. It's really an impressive system. Okay, excellent. Um, And they're trying to, I don't know how much, how open source it is, but they're trying to get them into um, schools and institutions around the world, and um, they, they have a few in Africa. Mm-hmm. Okay. Is that the Israel thing? From Israel? It, yeah, it's a... Oh, Israeli that one, yeah, yeah. Okay. Um... Okay, I've seen it. It's good. Um, now the question would be how how open source they are. If they can talk to us, so let's see. Who do we? Um, CEO and founder. Let's use their contact info. Would you mind looking into that one and see if you can track down an email of somebody? Sure. The person I met with it was. Uh, the organization was Living Green, which does rooftop garden and gardening in uh, Tel Aviv. Mm -hmm. And they are friends with the guy who made it and work with him. So this is... Can you pump that into the, your response as a reply? Or is that um, confidential I info? I'll do that. Excellent. Yeah, the most interesting thing here is actually contacting people. Uh, would you be willing to follow up with them and, and simply ask them if they're willing to share some of their designs? Um, I don't know the actual team that that developed it. Okay. I just know someone who has one. Okay. They, they donated one to, it's on the roof of a mall in Tel Aviv. Okay. Um, there's a small... Um, like aquaponic garden, not aquaponic. Uh, they have a little bit of aquaponics, but mostly hydroponics. Mm-hmm. Excellent. Are you in in Israel? I was over the winter. I'm in New York right now. Okay. Nice.
Yeah, so we can follow up with them. Um, idea being, we can contact the people who who are contacts of people, and then eventually try to track down with the technical developers. The cool thing is that some people who are very helpful it, are were just worth a lot. It's it's really really great when somebody's just willing to share all their years of experience because that means we don't have to do that. It's the whole whole approach. Um, I see Mart Hale. Yeah. Yeah. Mart. Um, is Mart still on? No, but he put in put in a link. Let's see that. Open source. Gold, gold, Open source water tech preview. What's that? Some headphones. I was going to say, Michael, uh, you know how much time they can cook on that system in Israel? How much runtime do they get out of it per day? To a limit, but they um, they can they can cook on it for a while. It's it's mostly a testing ground for it, so they put all their compost in there, and then mm -hmm. they um, they cook on it. I th actually. I think they said a couple hours. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. I looked at the numbers on that, and the numbers actually look quite promising, like a cubic meter, a couple of cubic meters. I don't know the numbers off my hand, but it was definitely feasible. Like, you can definitely do that for your full cooking needs from a small system, and that's what we're pursuing, that the numbers on paper look good. Yeah, yeah. definitely. Definitely. I have the contact information for the Living Green people. Okay. Let me see. So I'm refreshing it. It looks like the thing about the discuss is it's not really great because you got to refresh it and you and it takes a little time to load so we're gonna look for something better now we are working with minds.com which is the open source social network and they are building a social network for us where we can do this kind of stuff on the social network so we're making progress on that um, minds.com is the leading open source social network out there in terms of its traction Let's see, Michael, where'd you uh, share the contact info? Oh yeah, so that one? The link? Yeah, yeah it's uh, on the reply to... I just got it off their website, but... Um, Okay, so they do have okay, they do have the contact info there, yeah. Living Green dot info. I didn't do that. I didn't do that.
Okay, so living green we can... Okay, I can contact them. I'm going to just contact them right now. See if... See what they're made of. Yeah, they're they're very friendly people. Okay. Good. Did anyone else send send any email out? Okay, so I'm... I've emailed Living Green people. Next, who else we got? Next, any other emails we got that I can tap? Because I'm on a roll. Let's see. IRC link is posted. Yep. Um, okay, let's see this water purification link.
Oh wow. Hmm. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. So this Alacqua thing is, looks... They claim full open source intent. Very nice link. Um, let's see, make sure we capture that. Okay, Mart Hale, who I think left the track. That's a nice video. Okay, I recommend that. Okay, so look at the Mart Hale comment. Let me just repost that. It looks actually quite promising. About small scale water purification technology, which is electrocoagulation, which I've never heard of, but this guy appears to be on an open source mission. this last link very nice um, let's make sure we capture that so, okay this is a guy we need to contact looks like a young guy and he's claiming open source and claiming a big vision so that looks very promising Let's see, so water purification. So the first one, so El Aqua. No, I've never heard of that stuff, but I mean, if this is for real, it looks really, really good. Uh, so I just posted that under the water purification. If you refresh, you probably see it. Yeah, it's pretty cool. So, okay, can we track down that guy? That's, that's like... Uh, Open source water movement coming soon. Okay, it's definitely up our alley. So that's March 2015 for the video. It definitely has a, a good uh, marketing aspect. Yeah. Let's see what's on Facebook or Twitter or YouTube. Yeah, definitely good marketing. The cameraman, that's, we need camera people on our team. July, okay, so July 29, it's relatively recent, 
like that page okay so let's contact this guy message Okay, so I'm gonna send them my industry standard response here. Okay, so I sent them a message on Facebook. Let's see, where else? Open source water tech movement, San Antonio. He's a friend? Yeah, he's a friend of yours. Oh, cool. About to him now. Okay, that's really cool. So, um, this is really good. I need to get going, but people are welcome to hang out on us. I'm going to hang up the video call, but uh, just, just to wrap up the session. So what you see here is... Yeah, I mean, this process can be really powerful. Imagine there's many more people on this call. Um, I don't know, there's probably more people that try to get on the Hangout because it only handles 10 people and the stack is full here. So probably we missed some people and we need better tools and we're looking into getting Mumble, which is an open source teleconferencing software installed on our server. But this could be priceless in terms of like, okay, so look at some of the feedback we got already. Um, just like this open source water guy that you know if we build a team like that it could be very very powerful so uh, I'm liking the results and I want to see how this could scale and how we can make this better I do think the design sprints are are quite powerful and we haven't really cracked the nut of how to do it extremely effectively but we're learning and building the community so we'll continue doing this and if anyone has other ideas I guess uh, to follow up on this design sprint, I mean, you can make comments in the Google Doc for one. So, okay, so what are the all the channels for continuing? Uh, and I'm going to paste them in. So, continuation channels. So that anyone who's watching this video can also follow up. So, continuation channels. One is see the Google Doc, uh, which where we signed in. Second is the design sprint page where 
well, that's where the Google Doc is located. Um, so I'll type that in. So that's that. The third one is the intro design sprints page, which is called just design sprints on the wiki so people can find out how to join the next design sprint. So that's in the chat box. Let's see, how do we. I guess I can paste that into the document so people have that. Uh, I'm what else? On. Hmm? Go ahead. Yeah, I'm working on it right now. Just, okay, uh, great. Some of the information. Yep, excellent. And uh, what other channels are there? There's the this actual results page, which are the SMEs. I, mean, I, I think uh, Facebook's going to be a good one. I mean, in terms of Obvious, yeah, so let's. I'm gonna put a. In fact, we can put to put a link to the specific post. So. So number four is the actual results. The. The up. So people can upvote. Those different entries and enter more at this page so that's number four in the chat box I'm gonna post on Facebook right now reporting on this design sprint where I'll just link to the design sprint page well the the working page so I'm gonna say design sprint report Design sprint report. I'll take the actual entry to the August twenty seven design sprint. Uh, I do want to add a picture to that. such as okay I'll just do a little screenshot of this here I like the metaphor of the huge computers and huge water systems to small-scale water systems. That's exactly right. I mean, that's what's going to happen. But what I did. See. Oh yeah. Let's get this this page right here. Okay. I'll just do a screenshot for the Facebook page. Take a screenshot. that into the Facebook post so well what I should actually do no what I should do is yeah no that's fine PNG. Okay. 
Okay, so I published the report here just with a link to our work on Facebook and then we can link to that from this document because now it has a direct link. So And then uh, this video is being recorded, so that will be posted. So I'm going to stop the video right now and invite people to next week's design sprint, which will be on generating the full CAD, CAD of the brick press, uh, which normally takes a month or two. We're going to see how we can compress it into a few days, perhaps, if everybody gets involved, so maybe we can do a big call out. But people would have to learn basics of FreeCAD and I believe the level of proficiency to learn the FreeCAD skills required would be about I would say a person can learn that in about one hour or half an hour to actually become functional in generating the 3D CAD parts and assembling them together using a very basic instructional of uh, there's two five minute instructionals that we have that go through that um, okay so the Facebook page is posted and I'm going to, I guess I'm going to cut the video here. So thank you all for joining. Please continue if you'd like and, and just put in, feel free to put more links into that page. It's kind of our, our catch all page for some of the subject matter experts. The real goal is, of course, to, um, to contact the people. And maybe next week I can report on, okay, who, what did we score this session? Do we actually get a meaningful subject matter collaborator? Uh, who is actually deeply involved in a project uh, as a result, that would be well worth spending an hour on doing that. So um, I guess thanks to everybody. And we'll talk next week again. So next week, once again, next Saturday, 1 p.m., we'll do the next design sprint. This will be on the, on the generating of the CAD files for the extreme manufacturing build of the brick press, the one-day build coming up on September 23rd. So thanks a lot. Email me if you have any questions, marchin at opensourceecology.org or continue the discussion on uh, Facebook there, or continue on the wiki page, or in the, the Google document that we shared. Okay, thanks a lot. We'll see you soon.